Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to the city of York, everyone. Now I'm beginning this one outside a massive parish notice board, which you can see behind me. So before we even start walking here, I can put a card on this board and officially tick it off that York list. Here we go. And it's a pin board as well. That's very helpful. It means I don't have to use blue tack. There we are, I'm on the board. And I'm on the board in Fulford. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. It took me quite a long time to write the script for this one, given how much Fulford has to its name. Located two miles to the south of York city centre, this one lies on the eastern bank of the River Ouse. The ancient parish of Fulford consisted of two townships. In the north was Gate Fulford, whilst in the south was Water Fulford. From the two townships, the parish took the name of Fulford's Ambo in the 19th century. The two townships went their separate ways in 1866. In 1900, Gate Fulford was abolished and absorbed into the city of York, whilst Water Fulford became what we know today as Fulford Parish. That's why the parish boundary here is a little odd and doesn't include half of what people generally consider to be Fulford. The unparished area includes perhaps Fulford's best known landmark, Infall Barracks. The biggest historical happening in this part of York came in 1066, when its lands were bloodied thanks to a brutal battle, a precursor to the Battle of Stamford Bridge. The Battle of Fulford was won by the invading Vikings, and the site of the skirmish will feature in this episode. Also featured here is the site of the former Neyburn Hospital, and this place has a few notable sporting facts too. Former England manager Steve McLaren was born here, and York City once played here as well. Come with me, and let's see what else we can find. We begin on School Lane where there's landmarks straight away. The notice board was on the outside of Fulford Social Hall, and behind that there's the HQ of the local scouts. There are many landmarks around this one associated with St Oswald. Over the road is one of these, it's a primary school, St Oswald's C of E. After this we head out onto Heslington Lane, and the white building in front of us here is Fulford Gate Club. It's a working men's club, one of many pubs and bars in Fulford. The majority of them are dotted along Main Street, which we're coming to shortly. According to Facebook, this has live music every Friday. Over the road from this is the Black House. This is an old garage that's been turned into a Manhattan-style loft home. It's worth upwards of £1.1 million, and it was even featured on the Channel 4 TV show Britain's Most Expensive Houses. Also no doubt expensive is Fulford Park House, one of the last remaining Georgian and Regency properties that once lined Main Street. Now we're going to walk down this main road, which is where most of Fulford's amenities and things and interesting bits are. However, I need to remind you of something. We're only visiting the parished area of Fulford. 
a lot of Fulford is not actually in Fulford Parish, if that makes any sense. If I turn the camera around, I'll show you where the boundary is. So Heslington Lane is sort of the boundary, and then it sort of goes up there and around. So we'll be covering that bit there, but everything beyond that sort of area is not in Fulford Parish, including the Infall Barracks, which is probably Fulford's most well-known landmark. But of course, because it's not in the parished area, it won't be in this video. Or will it? We'll see later. Up first on Main Street is a former Methodist chapel. Originally built in 1845, this was rebuilt in 1896 and is now the base of a consultancy agency. Almost next door is the Saddle Inn, a traditional pub which benefits from a large beer garden to the rear, as well as car parking for up to eight vehicles. Next we have the Pavilion Hotel. The blue plaque on its wall honours John Barry. He was a composer who won an Academy Award for his music. As a boy, he lived here. Then we hit a phone box. What's this one you ask? A book exchange? Maybe a defib machine cabinet? Nope, this one's still got its phone. And if you need a bus, you can catch one on Main Street too. No fewer than seven services stop here, and they all go into York. Squint and you'll see the numbers. It's kind of not surprising that Fulford has got good transport links, actually. Main Street is, after all, the A19, and that's why it's so busy and so noisy. OK, now we're starting to hit some shops. There's one behind me. Fulford Flowers, looking very pretty. I have a, uh, a stall outside too, which is currently empty, but I imagine it's usually full of flowers. Let's see what else this has got retail-wise. More pubs? Aye, go on then. Here's the Plough, another traditional English one, and this one's popular with travellers, offering six boutique bedrooms. Fancy. The foodies amongst you here will be right at home. As well as the Big Bite Cafe next to Fulford Flowers, there's also this Chippy, which is a few doors down. As you continue down the road, more shops appear on both sides of the road. Fulford hasn't got a great deal compared to other villages of its size, but it has enough to get by. As well as general stores, cafes and pubs, it can boast an optician's, a pharmacy, a wine shop, and even a hearing aid shop too. It's a busy area of York, all things considered. So busy that even the buses get in my way a bit. Just before we leave Main Street behind, we have one final pub to see, and that's called the Bay Horse. You won't get a drink in this one though. It was bought earlier this year by a developer, and according to its former landlady, it won't be reopening again. So before too long, when you're walking down Main Street, the road starts to peter out a little bit and heads off down towards the A64. We are turning around at this point and we are finding a footpath which goes off to the left as you look at it, somewhere up there, and it heads towards the River Ouse. We're heading for Fulford Ings. We've now come away from the busy main street and we've found a familiar river. That's the River Ouse, folks, although it's not going to make much of an appearance in this episode. Instead, we're going to talk about what happens in Fulford when the Ouse floods. You see, Fulford benefits from having a huge floodplain between the river and the village's main street. Welcome to Fulford Ings, which as well as being a floodplain, is also one of York's sites of special scientific interest. The Ings are privately owned, but there are footpaths across them. The site includes a large fen meadow and reed beds, and it's a good place to see wetland plants, birds, and even the occasional roe deer. Colourful dragonflies can often be seen in the summer months here too, hovering around the reeds. The Ings stretch for around 700 metres from north to south, so they're nowhere near as extensive as those at Weldrake, for example. They are, though, just as important. And they're quiet too. 
So of all the places that you expect to find somebody with a little bit of local history, Fulford Ings was probably the last place on my list. But the woman who's been sort of walking alongside me along here, walking some, some dogs, um, has some, some history to give me in the form of a, a pamphlet of some description. Um, so when I get home, I imagine that that will have landed in my email inbox and I'll be able to take um, some of the information for this video off of that. I may have even told you a few things that have come off that pamphlet already. Who knows? Anyway, one thing I know for definite is that the church is our next major landmark, but it's still quite a way away. The church is kind of over there behind those trees. You can't really see it. And to get to it, we've got to use a road. If we continue up this path, we will eventually come to said road, which is actually the parish boundary. So when we get there, you'll see exactly what's Fulford and what's not. The road in question is St Oswald's Road, and on it is St Oswald's Hall. This was the original parish church, but it's now a private property. It dates from around 1150. It was declared redundant in 1973. Victims of the Black Death were buried in this churchyard, but unfortunately now there's no public access to either the church or its grounds. It's believed the original Fulford village grew around St Oswald's Hall. The parish boundary does include it, but not everything else on the northern side of this road. On the southern side, though, are these almshouses. Built in 1954, these are named after Sir John Hunt, who was a brewer in the late 19th century. He died in 1933 and left funds and instructions in his will for the creation of these almshouses to help Fulford's less fortunate. They cater for 24 residents. And at the end of the road, number one St Oswald's Road is the gorgeous looking Tepestidy House, which marks our return to Main Street. Okay, and that has brought us to Main Street yet again. And the next thing we are heading for now is the church. Now, this is the parish boundary, as I was telling you in the voiceover. So everything beyond this road is not Fulford, it's the unparished area of York, including Infall Barracks. Now, I was going to go up there and record in full barracks but I, I'm kind of short of time at the moment so there's going to be two special sections in this video the first one is in full barracks you'll get the second one later here it comes right now although in the unparished area in full barracks are Fulford's best known landmark the barracks are not the original ones that were built in 1795 they have largely been demolished they were cavalry barracks which were built as part of the British response to the threat of the French Revolution. The current buildings are infantry barracks and date from between 1877 and 1880. Their creation took place as part of the Cardwell reforms which encouraged the localisation of British military forces. They are the current headquarters of the British Army's 15th Infantry Brigade. In the 1950s, the barracks were renamed Infall Barracks to reflect the battle honours won by the West Yorkshire Regiment at the Battle of Imphal in 1944 during World War II. They will soon close. In 2016, the MOD announced that this would happen in 2031, a date that was later brought forward to 2030. So we've seen the old church, now here's the current one. Dedicated to St Oswald, this is fairly modern, having been built in 1866. The old church was used as a mortuary chapel until it was sold privately, eventually becoming St Oswald's Hall in the early 1980s. In comparison, this new church has relatively little history. It has a World War I war memorial though in its churchyard. It's a tall white cross with a Celtic wheel, and there are 86 names in total on this one. There's more war-related history in the church's windows. One of them commemorates John Reynard Key, who gave his life in the Second Boer War in 1905. Aside from that, I was struggling a bit to find out anything more about this one because it's so modern. It is, of course, a Grade II listed building. Certain parts of this church have undergone some restoration, particularly the windows. In fact, in here, there's a whole display board which is dedicated to them. So here we've got a board which tells us about the Rose Window, which is in the north transept, 
which makes it that one. Although, on the other side, we'll see, the south transept has one as well. But the one on the north transept has been restored recently. It says here, it, it's especially beautiful. Between the spokes, each petal is filled with stained glass. It contains a roundel showing an angel with outstretched wings or a saint. These are set into an intricate geometric background, finely painted with a pattern of oak leaves and acorns with borders of alternating green glass and three leaf vine tendrils. So, that's what it looks like. And of course, it's been restored. And this tells you all about the restoration here. So if you come into this church, you can have a read about the, rest the restoration of the window. And it looks rather nice, it has to be said. There's plenty of nice windows in this church, actually. You've seen the, uh, the one at the end there, the great big east window. And there's some other ones along this side here. As you can see, I always like to see stained glass, but of course, the one thing stained glass does do is it dampens the, the light inside a church. If it's just natural glass without any uh, stain on it, it's lighter. But uh, you can't deny that stained glass is quite beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. That's St. George, by the way. Okay, let's uh, head out of the... Uh, church and carry on walking we've still got quite a bit to see here so we're going to head back um retrace our steps a little bit from where we were at the very beginning of this video and we're going to head towards the school and the playing field and a few other bits and bobs we are in the last sort of vestiges of this walk but there's still quite a bit of plodding to go yet After returning down Heslington Lane for a way, we find a dead-end street called Fulford Gate. At the end of the road is Fulford School. This was founded in 1963, became a comprehensive school in 1970, and since 2018 has been an academy. According to national newspaper The Independent, Fulford School has the third best sixth form of all comprehensive schools in England. That's not a bad little selling point, that, if you're looking for a school yourself. Next door, there's a sports area which features some football pitches and some tennis courts. This is the Fulford Community Sports Club. This whole area has always been associated with sport. Eastwood Avenue, which is nearby, used to be the location of the Fulford Gate Football Ground, the former home of York City Football Club. The ground was demolished in 1932. This area is also adjacent to Germany Beck, which has some interesting history of its own. Okay, to the south of this area where you've got the school and you've got the sports area, you can see behind me there's a massive expanse of new build properties. There's not much point walking around that area because it's just generally residential and it's not even all finished yet. There's still plenty more, I believe, houses to go up down there. So there's probably going to be some construction traffic and God knows what down there. So it's not really worth it walking along there. However, what is worth talking about is something we've mentioned a couple of times already in this video, but we haven't yet spent spoken about properly, and that is the Battle of Fulford, which took place in 1066. Here's today's second special section. The land on which those new houses stand has for decades been blocked by historians from being built upon. That's because of its bloody past. The Battle of Fulford took place upon it on the 20th of September 1066, just before the Battle of Stamford Bridge. The battle would see King Harold Hadrada of Norway defeat Edwin and Morcar, the Earls of York. The battle could well have been avoided altogether, because the Earls could have easily hidden behind York city walls. However, instead they decided to meet the Viking army across Germany back. Try as the English army might to break the Viking shield wall though, it proved ultimately futile. The English were heavily outnumbered and eventually conceded defeat. York was then surrendered to the Norwegians under the promise that their victors would not force entry to the city. Harold and his army would then retire to Stamford Bridge, where just five days later they were defeated by the English.
Okay, and we are back to the school where I began this episode. Now, cast your mind back to the Neyburn episode here in New York. And you'll remember at the end of that video, I spoke about Neyburn Hospital and how it didn't feature in the Neyburn episode because it, well, isn't in Neyburn. The site of the hospital is actually in Fulford and built on it these days, there's something very different, very much, very much more modern. So let's go and have a drive around what that is. It's the York Designer Outlet. Neyburn Hospital's history goes back to the acquisition in 1899 of a small farmhouse. Named Acres House, it's the only hospital-related building which survives today. The facility was designed by Alfred Creer using a compact arrow layout and it opened as York Borough Asylum in April 1906. After Neyburn Lodge Farm was acquired in 1913, further expansion of the hospital became possible. It became the York City Mental Hospital in 1927 and joined the NHS in 1948. It suffered a period of decline in the 1980s, and when it closed in 1988, most of the hospital's buildings were demolished. The site was redeveloped as the York Designer Outlet, and this is it. It's owned by the MacArthur Glen Group, a Canadian company which develops and manages designer outlet malls across the world. It has seven in the UK alone. York's outlet was opened in 1999. It has a vast amount of high street shops, as well as a spacious food quarter. It's even got a children's play area and some 2,800 parking spaces. It's also the location of another of the city's park and ride sites. It's only 10 minutes from York and it's well worth a visit. But it's time for me to leave this and Fulford behind. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the Parish of Fulford, and I'm out. <laughs>